The bell crank mechanism is in equilibrium for an applied load of F1 equal to 10 kN. Assume A is 310 millimeters, B is 100 millimeters, C is 85 millimeters, and theta is 50 degree. The pen at B has an ultimate shear strength of 370 megapascal. The bell crank and the support bracket, H, have an ultimate bearing strength of 560 megapascal. Determine the minimum diameter required for the pen at B if a minimum factor of safety of 2.5 is required with respect to shear and bearing. Report the actual factors of safety for all three considerations based on your chosen pen diameter. Okay. In this problem, I want to use almost everything that I have learned before, mostly determining stress. Okay, <clears throat> the first step is freeway diagram. Okay, I want to make my element free. The only thing that restrains my element here would be a pen at B. So I will release that by putting two unknown forces there. First, let me project F1, the force in rod number one, into two components in the x and y direction. And I will do the same for F2. And I'm releasing my pen and I'm putting two forces there. B in the x direction and B in the y direction. So now this element is free. All right. First, how much is F1x? That would be F1 times cosine of theta, which gives me 6.428 kN. For F1y, that would be F1 times sine theta, and the value would be 7.66 kN. And I can do the same for F2x and F2y. F2x would be F2 times cosine of 30, which is equal to 0 0.866 F2. And F2y would be F2 times sine of 30, which is equal to half of F2. All right. Now, I will use some of the forces about uh, pen B to determine the values of F2x and F2y. Okay. How much would be the moment of this force? I assume the clockwise is positive, so that would be negative F1y times a. How much would be the moment of F1x? Zero, because it is passing through that point. How much would be the moment of F2y? That would be F2y times this distance, which is b, and that would be clockwise, so that would be positive. And for this one would be F2x times this distance, which is C. Okay. And that should be equal to zero. All right. I plug the values that I have and I can solve it for F2. And that gives me F2 equal to 19.21 kN. Now, I want to determine the reaction support. For that one, I have to use some of the forces in X and Y direction. Some of the forces in X direction says BX plus F2x minus F1x, they should be equal to zero. I plug the values into this equation, and I can solve it for bx. That would be equal to negative 10.21 kN. And some of the forces in y direction, negative F1y, because that's going downward, minus F2y plus by equal to zero. And if I plug the values, by would be equal to 17.26. All right. So I have determined all, in, all forces, reaction forces in this case. Can you tell me how much is the total reaction force at this pen? I have two components of forces here, and I want to determine the resultant force. And the resultant force would be like this. Total forces at B would be a square root of bx squared plus by squared. So the total force at b would be 20.1 kN. Okay, so far I determined reaction forces. Okay, any questions so far? The second step would be using the design concepts to determine how much would be the 
factor of safety everywhere in this structure. Okay. First, I will consider shear stress at pen here. Look at this pen. <laughs> this is a pen that is supposed to carry this load. If B is the total force that is transferred from this bell crank to the reaction supports. Okay, and there is one pen that is transferring that load. What kind of a stress is developed in that pen? It's shear stress. Okay, so the shear stress equation would be force divided by area, and I need to determine each of these separately. How much is force? We just talked about that. That would be the total force that transfers from that bell crank to the support. So that would be equal to Fb, which is 20.1 kN. Okay? What is the area that I should consider in this pen? Do I have two shear faces or just one shear face? It's two. Can you see that? We call this as single shear connection. And in the other case, it would be double shear connection. In this case, we have double shear connection. Correct? So the area would be two times area of one pen. Two here is because I have double shear connection. An area of one pen would be simply pi d squared over four, and d is the diameter of that pen. All right. So <clears throat> that would be 1.571 d squared. Remember, I don't know how much is diameter, and I want to design what would be the required diameter for this case. So shear stress should be V over A, that gives me 20.1 kN. I multiply that by 1000 to get that into neodon. And I will divide that by area, which gives me 1.571 d squared. And I know that this stress should be smaller than the allowable stress. The ultimate shear strength of pen is 370 megapascal. So sigma allowable would be uh, shear stress at pen divided by factor of safety. So that would be 370 divided by factor of safety, which in this case is 2.5. It is given in the problem statement here. This is the required factor of safety. So I can design how much would be the diameter. Look at this design equation. Everything in this design equation is known but diameter. And I can solve it for this diameter, correct? and that gives me diameter squared equal to 86.44 squared millimeters and diameter would be 9.3 so the minimum required diameter for transferring this load from bell crank to support would be 9.3 millimeters now I want to consider another part for the other part I will focus on the bearing stress criteria the bearing stress is a normal stress. So similar to other stresses, if I want to determine that, that would be force over area. Okay. The question is, the force is known here. The force, the total force is the FB, the 20.1 kN. The question is, what is area? To understand what is area, I'm focusing on this part. Okay. I'm enlarging this part. And this is what I drew here. So there is a hole here. There is a pen inside that. Everybody can test that. Hold your pen in your hand and uh, pull it in any direction that you want. You can feel some sort of a stress in your fingers. And that is where this pen is bearing on your hand. This is what we call it bearing stress. Okay, so what is the area at which this force is acting on? It is actually the area, the curved area here, correct? So the total curved area here. But instead of considering this area, I'm considering this area, which is smaller than that. This is what we do in bearing stress, calculating bearing stress. Okay, how much would be the area of bearing stress? We already determined force. The question is, what is area? So area would be diameter times thickness of 
the build crank because I want to determine the stress, bearing the stress in that element. So diameter is something that I'm looking for. I want to design how much would be the required diameter and the thickness would be eight millimeters. And how much is this bearing stress? So that would be force over area. Force would be 20.1 kN. I plug the values into this equation. And I know that this stress should be smaller than the allowable stress. The bearing stress, the maximum bearing stress in this problem is the ultimate bearing strength in the bell crank is 560 megapascal. So the allowable stress would be sigma y divided by factor of safety. Sigma y is 560. I plug the values and solve it for diameter. So in this case, the minimum required diameter would be 11.2 millimeters. I got two numbers here. In the first criteria, I got diameter equal to 9.3 millimeters. In the second criteria, I got 11.2 millimeters. Which one is the answer of this problem? We get the first case. It says that the diameter should be larger than 9.3. And in the second case, it should be larger than 11.2. So D would be maximum of these two values, and that would be 11.2 millimeter. All right. The last part, it asks for actual factor of safety for different parts. So at 10, remember, now I'm using larger diameters. It asks for 9.2 millimeters. I'm using larger diameters here. Shear stress is force divided by twice the area of 10. Force is 20.1 kN, uh, and area would be pi times 11.2, because that is the new diameter of 10, squared divided by 4, that would be 98.5 squared millimeters. And if I plug the values into this equation, that gives me the value of a stress at the pen equal to 102 megapascal. How much would be the factor of safety in this case? Factor of safety is Maximum allowable, maximum yield stress at pen divided by the actual stress in the pen. So the maximum allowable yield stress was 270, and the actual stress as we obtained here is 102 megapascal. That gives me the actual factor of safety in that element equal to 3.63. Why it is larger than 2.5? I think it's clear. Look at this situation. If we select 9.3 millimeters diameter. The factor of safety would be 2.5. What happens if I select larger diameter? Definitely the factor of safety increases. So, and at bracket, I can do the same. The force would be 20.1 kN, and the area would be T times D, and that would be 134 squared millimeter, and the stress would be 149.6 megapascal. If I plug the value into this factor of safety equation, I will get 3.74. Remember, this is in brackets. And the factor of safety at this bell crank would be equal to 2.5. And if you want, you can think about that why it is.